So hi everyone, in a new video, I'm going to do a little bit of story time. I'm going to share how my Discord got hacked, how we added validation, but it did not work. It actually blew the server up and how then yesterday at 2 a.m. ish, I posted a message on our internal group. Everyone around 100 people joined in and we on the live stream figured out the right way to do Discord validation. If you want, if you're already in the course, feel free to ignore this video, go directly to the content and you can find the unofficial stream there. This is sort of the stream I did yesterday. If you've not yet bought the course, I will be doing spontaneous lives like these whenever there's like a production bug or an issue that we need to fix and we can try to figure this out together. The front end for this fix was actually written by someone in the course. I did not write it. And if you look at the course discord, we, so as you can see around 1.29 AM yesterday, I posted for a spontaneous live where we had to fix this. I understood this. Fix involved cryptography, uh, Discord APIs, building a front end, building a back end. So a bunch of things. All the code is open source linked in the description. So feel free to directly check out the code or let's get right into the video and understand everything that happened and how we fixed it. Cool. So what happened was uh, this is our internal sort of Discord and this Discord has a bunch of people that have not yet bought the course. The reason for that is we shared invite links and people shared invite links with their friends and hence this is like a very overpopulated group and, and we need to verify people who have actually bought the course so that we can give them access to a bunch of channels. For example, there are a bunch of these uh, smaller subgroup channels and only people who have paid need to be put into a smaller subgroup so that they can interact with that subgroup. Um, we tried this yesterday. The general approach that Discord uh, recommends is you create a Discord bot. So you basically go to a channel like this, uh, you type in question mark verify and a discord bot messages you. So uh, if I look at it from a system designs perspective, uh, user posts a message here, question mark verify. This hits one of our backend APIs. This hits one of our backend APIs, uh, the verification thing. Our backend API then needs to message the end user. So they receive a DM from us, let's say Harkirath and uh, they need to sort of start interacting with the bot. They need to give their email. The bot will then verify from our backend server whether or not this person has bought the course and then they will give them a specific role in Discord. What's the role? Well, I have the role of intermediate coder here or course participant. So we can give such roles and the people who have, for example, the Koala role will be part of the Koala subgroup. So we need to randomly give people one of these subgroups and this bot sort of does, does that and talks to the user in Discord DMs. The problem is since so many people are there, Discord thought this was a spam and we were trying to spam people even though we were legitimately talking to them or what was and hence we got banned yesterday after 10 people joined. So we need to figure out a different way where we don't need to message the end user to fix this. We make the user type the command question mark verify and their email. Only the problem is when they type something like this because well if they give us their email here we'll receive the email and we just give them the roles. We won't reply to them. We won't DM them. Discord won't block us. The problem is we don't want people to put their emails publicly um, on a public group and hence the solution I found was let's ask the user to encrypt their emails somehow and then they just need to post a message with the encrypted email and our backend server will be able to decrypt the email and only our backend server will be able to decrypt the email and hence even if you're posting on a public group people won't be able to understand anything from this encrypted string. Cool. That was the solution. Again, if you want to see the whole thing, me struggling to figure this out and then we tried a few crypto libraries did not work. Finally, did a bunch of very random things. Code is out there. You can see if you want to see the whole thought process and me working with the hundred folks last night, you can check out the video on the course dashboard. The way we fix this finally is, so I have, if you look at the code, there are three parts of the code. The first is the backend server. This backend server does encryption and decryption. So if you look at the index.js file here, it exposes two routes the slash secret routes, which given an email gives the user back a command that they can simply paste here. Okay. So if I go to the front end, like this is the final front end that was made by someone else, uh, even though it might look like I've made the contribution here, I haven't. So this front end code, which is basically this application right here, anyone can come, anyone can come. It's an open thing, put their email here and press the submit button. When they do, they get back a string like this. They need to copy the string and paste it in discord press enter. Once they do, this command reaches our Python server, which is our sort of discord bot, this thing right here. This guy, to quickly show you what it does, the control basically reaches here. If uh, a user sort of sends a message, again, we have not DM them, they have DM'd us. So hopefully there will be some rate limiting, but the, we won't get banned or uh, we won't be like in the spam protection uh, thingy that happened yesterday. So 
what do we do here? We get the user's encoded email, which is like this second part right here. How do we get it? We split the message by space and get the second part. Once we have this, we hit the backend API to decode it. Uh, which backend API? The Node.js backend API that we wrote that given this encrypted string can give a decrypted string. And even though this is open on the internet, there's a secret that protects it. So only our Python server nodes knows that secret. What secret? This secret right here. This secret is present in the Python server. It's also present in the Node.js server right here, but it's not present in the browser code, which is why end users cannot really access it. Only these two servers can talk to each other with it. This Python server talks to the Node.js server, decodes the email. Why didn't we do it directly here? We tried, but the libraries were very finicky. So we did all the encryption and decryption in Node.js. Here we get back the response JSON from which we get the decrypted email. So if this was the email I put here, the user will use this command, paste it here. I will get this string in this variable user encoded email and then from here i will get the actual email from this backend server once i do i need to do all validation checks feel free to ignore what's happening here and this also i've commented for now so this logic will hit our backend servers to make sure this user has actually bought the course but i've commented it for now because yesterday was live stream finally this logic actually gives this user the verified rules how where does it give it from there's an array at the top which is the random subgroups that we have it decides a random subgroup amongst these, like chooses a selected role and gives it to the user. By the end of it, the user gets a role and the user also gets the verified role. That also happens somewhere here. And finally, uh, that specific user is sort of linked to our Discord. We sort of make sure people can't repeat this. So like a Discord ID can only be linked to a single email. And that in the end, even if there are like 5,000 people on this group, only the people who have bought the course can verify themselves, can handle each email can only be linked to a single person and all they have to do is this and this way we don't ever DM them and their email does not get leaked that way. It's like a right secure way to do it. Maybe there are better ways of doing it. Did not figure that out yesterday. It was a very panicky night. People were panicking because we turned the discord group off and started verification and verification did not work because uh, we got spam protected and hence we had to open the group again and figure this out last night. It was a very random life, super fun. And like as I said, front end was written by someone else. A lot of code, I sort of, people were helping me out basically. So that was a lot of fun. Let me see if I wanna teach something else or tell something else here. No, code is open source. And one question everyone might have is, I can put anyone's email here. What if I can snipe someone else's course, like Discord? You can do that, but that's why this logic won't be deployed here on this website. It'll be deployed here. Only people who have bought the course will have a new section here called the command. And here you will get this actual command. We won't really, you can extract it from here, but I'll probably shut this website down because well, you can snipe other people's, not the course, but like the discord. If you paste their email here first and get this command and use this command to paste it here. Makes sense. Which is why this will finally be deployed here. Only if you have bought the course, will you have access to this logic and you'll get the command here. Just copy the command, paste it here. You should be good to go and you'll be added to a subgroup with a designated TA. Cool. Hopefully that was a good explanation. If not, if you want to see the whole thing uh, in the code is already out there, feel free to check it out. If you want to see me struggle through this last night in around one and a half hours is what it took us to build the whole thing. Feel free to buy the course and you can check the video out right here. It's the second video, which is just like, this is just like the warm up stage. So second if you not good. don't get overwhelmed, uh, this wasn't part of the course. You have simple videos lined up initially. So so beginner friendly close, but like I want to do random lives like these whenever I'm solving something, especially if it's course related, I'll sort of share what's happening all around. Cool. Thank you for joining. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.